Good morning and thank you for tuning in or good afternoon, good evening if you're watching this on the replay. Always nice to have people watching on the replay. Please do let me know where and when you're watching from. And a big shout out and hello to everyone who's tuning in live already. Great to see you here. Thanks for coming along to watch me rabbit on. So today I'm talking all about uh, functional fixedness, uh, which is an interesting bias. And I'm just... Uh, Tristan, good to see you, buddy. For some reason, I'm not seeing all of the comments come up from everyone, but never mind. Um, okay, yes, so functional fixedness. This is a really cool one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by playing a little game. Uh, so I want to, I'm going to set you a puzzle, a challenge, and I want you to have a think about how you would solve this. You're welcome to put stuff in the comments, but you don't have to. Okay, so I give you... A, a box of uh, thumbtacks, you know, that's thumbtacks, that's what Americans call them, isn't it? Um, you know, pins, drawing pins. Um, so you've got a little box of those. You've got uh, a candle, just a small one, like a birthday candle, maybe. Uh, and you've got uh, uh, some matches. Your challenge is to find a way to secure that candle to the wall and light it so that as the wax melts, none of it will drip on the floor. Have a think now about how you would do that. So I, I can see a few people have just tuned in as I was in the middle of explaining that. Um, little quick mental puzzle for you. Imagine that I've just handed you, quick mental puzzle, I've just handed you uh, a box of thumbtacks, little drawing pins, a small candle and a box of matches. And your aim, your challenge is to attach this small candle that I've just given you to the wall in such a way that you don't damage the candle uh, and that when you light it, the wax melts and does not drip onto the floor. <clears throat> and literally every time I've explained this, the number of people watching has gone up halfway through. So, <clears throat> so there's a good chance that some people are a bit confused. Good day, James. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, so have a th have a quick think. I'll give you, I'll explain it one more time to give you a chance to to carry on thinking about how you would solve this problem. So I've given you a small candle, a box of pins, um, and some matches. You need to attach the candle to the wall in such a way that the wax won't drip onto the floor. So, has anyone come up with a solution how you would go about doing this? Let me know in the comments. By the way. One of the first things that you would probably try, or that many people would try, because uh, I've, I've played around doing this one in person because it's fun, um, is trying to put the pin into the candle to pin it to the wall. Normally that just damages the candle. Uh, but even if it doesn't, uh, you've still got to watch out for the candle dripping. How are you going to solve that? Uh, Alison says, I just woke up really too much at this time of morning. Something called Relax Club helped me get a good night's sleep. There we go. And if you want a good night's sleep and you want more information about Relax Club, just let me know in the comments. I'll send you a link. You can even try it for free. Anyway, um, James says, put the candle on the floor. No, that's not going to stop the wax dripping on the floor and it's not going to secure the candle to the wall. So you failed on both parts. Oh, on the floor, but up against the wall. You're still going to get wax on the floor, aren't you, James? So here's the thing. If you struggle to solve that, you're not alone. Most people um, struggle to solve that. But a five-year-old or six-year-old maybe would probably stand a better chance of solving that problem than, than James Chisholm, for example. Um, and why is that? Well, here's how you would solve it, or here's a really simple way of solving it. The box of thumbtacks or, 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 or pins, drawing pins. Take that box, empty the pins out, pin the box to the wall, put the candle in the box, light the candle, done. The wax can't drip onto the floor anymore. And when I do this, <clears throat> excuse me, when I've done this in person, I've physically had all of these items there. And yet, 
very few people come up with that solution. And hey, I'm not pretending I would come up with that solution very easily myself either, had I not thought about it this way. So how do you come up to that solution? And what is it that stops us seeing that? Well, this is what functional fixedness is all about. I won't go into too much depth, um, but you may have heard about Gestalt theory. Hi, Kat, you've just tuned in. Um, don't worry that you missed the notification. Um, you've also missed all of the important stuff. Uh, no, but you can you can go back and you can rewatch it. Uh, so Joanna's saying it's the first I've heard of a box. Did you say you gave us a box of thumbtacks? There we go. Uh, so I did say that I gave you a box. Cat, just to recap very, very briefly, uh, I've given everyone a load of items. They have a box of thumbtacks. They have a small candle um, and they have some matches. They need to put the candle on the wall in such a way that the wax isn't going to drip on the floor. And most people really, really struggle with that. Um, <laughs> why is a five-year-old playing with matches? Don't, don't, don't distract me. Um, so yes, I did say I gave you a box of thumbtacks. Um, but of course, we're not thinking about the fact that there's a box of thumbtacks. We're thinking about the fact that we've got thumbtacks. And in a real world scenario, the same thing happens. People don't think about the fact that we can use that box as part of this challenge as well. Why? Because of what this video is about, functional fixedness, which literally means that we already in our mind have uh, a, a clear understanding and expectation of what different items are to be used for. So the idea of using one of those items for something different requires an element of creative thinking that we often struggle with and hide from ourselves because that's not how we would normally use that item. So in this case, the box of drawing pins, you think of it as drawing pins. The box is simply to keep the drawing pins in. So even when you do this in person, people don't pick up the box and think to use that. They take pins out of it and try and work out how they can use them. Because we that the function of that box is fixed, i.e. functional fixedness, in our minds as to that is the, the act that it performs. That's the job that it does. That's what it's there for, to hold pins in this case. So the reason I say a five or six-year-old could probably come up with a solution to this, and you're right, James, let's not let the five-year-old play with the matches, um, We'll let an adult do the lighting. But the reason why a five or six year old could come up with this is because up until the age of about seven, we don't really have the same fixedness um, of the function of things to as much of an extent because we're more flexible to go, ah, oh, we want to do this. You know, a, a, a small child will pick up a coat hanger and it can be a gun. And there's no question of that. And yet we have this kind of perception that what a coat hanger is for hanging up coats. Now, to be fair, as you're growing older, you can probably still think of lots of different uses for a coat hanger that, yeah, that's why kids play with boxes. Absolutely, that's why kids play with boxes. To us, it's a box. We store something in it. To someone other than that, it's, uh, it's a toy. And it could be a pirate ship or a, anything you want it to be. And of course, when you establish that boxes are fun to play with, then you have a different function for that box in mind. And so you can still grow past that point and still enjoy playing with the box. <laughs> I guess cats don't have functional fixedness either. Um, do you know what? Cats are just horrid. <laughs> I love cats. I love them. But they're also, I don't want to say a rude word while I'm live. But yeah, they are. I love that they are, but they are. Um, Good morning, Cara Wood. Welcome back to my voice. Uh, I, my voice has missed you too. Um, okay, so so yeah, that's what functional fixedness is. Why am I telling you all of this? Um, well, uh, just to you know, give you a chance to hear my voice. No, I'm telling you all this because it can be really useful to understand it. When we have a problem that we wish to solve, quite often we get stuck in certain expected thinking. So the idea that that box of pins, we can use the pins from it, but we don't consider the fact that the box may be a useful tool as well. We can step outside of that by forcing ourselves into a more creative place. 
And a really simple way of doing this is a, a game you've probably played at some point as a child or, or something you've done at some point as a child, not even realized it was a game where exactly James Chisholm thinking outside the thumbtack box. That's what it's all about. So find an item a random item, the nearest thing to me at that point, as I said, it was a teaspoon. And then think about, okay, so if it wasn't a spoon, what else could I use it for? And often the first kind of moment of trying to think of something can be a bit tricky. But when you decide actually what it is, it's a, it's a miniature back scratcher. Oh yeah, that's good. Um, then you can start to think about other functions that it can have as well. So let me know in the comments, what else could a teaspoon be used for? Um, come up with some random ideas for me and let me know in the comments. Let's see how your creativity can be. Um, so by taking a moment away from the actual problem that you're dealing with and engaging that creativity and basically practicing thinking in, in a different way, of course, yeah, uh, do you know what? This... <laughs> I love how well this highlights people's character. So we've got James Chisholm instantly goes to, it's a beer delivery device, absolutely. And Cara Wood, it's, it's for contouring. Um, do, do you like how I, I know what contouring is? Um, spot on, brilliant. So if you've got a problem that you want to solve, if you're finding yourself a little bit stuck, take a creative break to think about things in a different way even if it's something completely unrelated to that problem, like what can a spoon be used for, or even a, a duck. I don't, know. I don't know why that's close to me, but it's right there, so I'll use that example. Um, it'll, it'll help get you into a more creative place, which you can then use when you come back to look at your, your problem and actually be focusing on a different solution instead. Um, Sleeping, a, what a duck, a duck can be used for sleeping. I think I must've missed something there, James. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what functional fixedness is all about. Being aware of it can help us to overcome it, but it's not always a bad thing. You see, it has a use. I think where, where this idea of functional fix, fixedness comes from uh, is based on gestalt theory. So we kind of, we create schemas in our head um, for everything. It's, it's like it's what cognitive biases really are based on. It's these shortcuts that we take to make everything easier. Because if we had to, every time we go to use a chair, if we had to think about how does a chair work, how am I going to use this um, and work out how to sit down every time we did it, it would get very, very complicated and confusing. We just look at a chair and we sit on it. We don't have to think twice because we have that schema that gestalt that idea of that's what the thing is so we use it that way but breaking outside of that can be really useful and actually it can help us to break outside of the mundane daily stuff and right now if you're watching this live there's enough mundanity isn't there there's enough groundhog day feeling going on um, for a lot of people and so one of the ways to help break that up is to look at how can things be used or interpreted differently. Um, cats come up with some great ideas. So the spoon could be used as a bookmark, a door handle, a screwdriver. Um, it is something tells me she's probably used it for all of those things. Um, for prizing things open, a lever, a candle snubber. Fantastic. Good, good work, cat. You can tell that um, that she spends time with kids. Um, I only ever butter bread using a spoon, but a dessert spoon. Why? Why do you butter bread with a dessert spoon? Is it easier than a knife for you? I'm, I'm really curious about that. Or, or do you just not allow knives in the house? She's, she's not allowed to play with knives. It's not safe. Um, sorry, that was mean. I'm obviously joking. Um, but yes, so, so that's what functional fixedness is all about. Um, it can absolutely be really useful because if we had to work out what every item was for every time we went to use it, it could get a bit tricky. Um, but it, it can really sometimes limit our creative thinking. Um, oh, okay. So James Chisholm says it doesn't rip the bread if you use a spoon. Well, there we go. Is it? Can you can you spread it as thinly though? 
I'm, I, I'm, I'm really curious about this. I'm going to try it. Um, my cat uses the frying pan as a bed. There we go. Wonderful. Yeah, cats don't have any functional fixedness. All they care about is can I eat it? Can I fit? If I fit, I sit. That's that's about it, right? Oh, and, and what can I do to wake people up and annoy them today? Um, there you go. It doesn't rip fresh bread. I work in catering, so it's much quicker and more effective than knife. Yeah, okay, cool. I get it. Um, why would you want a thin layer of butter? Okay, James, fair point. Um, cool. Well, this has been uh, enlightening for me as well. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start using spoons for spreading. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. In fact, do you know what? Forget everything I was saying about functional fixedness. Don't worry about cognitive biases. Tune in next Thursday, and I'll have another catering tip for you. Um, I'll have a word with Cat, and we'll we'll come up with some some other gems that I can share with you. Um, courtesy of, of the comment section uh, that can make your, your life in the kitchen easier. Okay, well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've uh, found some value from today. Remember, take some time today to, to pick on some random objects around you and just imagine what else they could be used for. Engage that creativity. Think differently about your everyday surroundings. It'll help you to, to to break up your day and to feel like you're experiencing different things right now, which could be really helpful for you. Um, and it will also help you to, to, to break some monotony and to think more creatively and, and ultimately use that to come up with different solutions to your challenges and problems. So there we go, that's functional fixedness. Thanks very much for tuning in. Go out there and have an amazing day today. Thanks for tuning in, take care.